now what's caused a lot of confusion is the recent um, disclosure that the state parks has this, um, you know, hidden money in, um, in the special fund. And so uh, we're not assuming that we're going to really get any of that money. We might get some of that money in some matching funds, but remember there's 70 parks that are on the closure list. And some of them um, have are more, I, I guess, more dire needs than we do, perhaps. But I, I think we'll probably get some of that. But we still need to negotiate this this uh, operational agreement, and we still need to continue to fundraise to um, to achieve our goals of, of keeping the park open on the weekends. And you know, um, you know, we have a, a tour every second Saturday, and we want we're interested in getting enough volunteers to where we could actually have. Uh, you know, walks and tours every every weekend, and ha it would be really fun to have the house open every weekend, every Saturday. And, and I, I think that we can do that. I think we have enough volunteers now to do that. And it's just a matter of, of we're working right now with a, a consultant, uh, you know, who's doing it for free, who's helping us set up our structure for how you know, how we're actually going to do all this stuff. You know, how are we going to you know open the gates, and how are we going to you know assign volunteers? Um, do the things that need to get done and so that's where we are now and we're you know we're just moving forward i'm optimistic that we're going to be able to work out an operating agreement with anderson marsh interpretive association i'm optimistic that uh the park will stay open i uh am doing my best to uh keep the park open and have my staff uh, do general groundskeeping deferred maintenance projects and upkeep um, I have a great relationship with Anderson Marsh Interpretive Association, and uh, they are helping me out with uh, funding of, of the toilets, opening and closing the main gates to the parking lots, and other uh, projects throughout the park here. So I'm, I, I'm confident that we'll be able to keep it open to the, for the public. It's their park. Cool. There's lots of great natural things for plants and animals here that you can see. Every time I go out here, I see something different. I learn something all the time, and I've been doing this since uh, 1985 here. And um, but not only that, you have cultural sites here. This is this was a the home of, of large groups of Native American people. Um, the sort of the boundary between uh, the Pomo, the southeastern Pomo tribes that lived out in the marsh to the west here, and right behind me on the other side of the house here is Siegler Creek, which was sort of the boundary of the Lake Miwok. And they were over near uh, Lower Lake High School was a Lake Miwok village. And so there were two sort of ethnic groups that sort of met here, right sort of where we are right now. They both used this whole area and they, and they intermarried. And um, so you had a lot of that kind of thing going on here too. So two, two different cultures meeting here. Um, when I first got to Anderson Marsh uh, with my crew from Sonoma State, we started walking the property and we, we were coming across mortars and pestles like this, um, some, most of them broken, uh, a lot of them just laying actually along the beach, along uh, Cash Creek. It was a drought year in 1976 and the lake level was very low. So things that had been underwater for hundreds of years were exposed on the surface and we were actually able to record all along Cash Creek, uh, grinding bowls like this, um, spear points, uh, all kinds of stone tools. When we started walking around on the property uh, and recorded the, the large Indian village sites, those sites contained um, depressions in the ground left from the structures that were there, the tule houses that had been built there. After thousands of years, they would collapse in and just leave a depression in the ground. In some areas, we actually found uh, grooves and lines carved in the rocks, uh, rock art. Uh, on one rock face facing the setting sun, I found 13 red lines painted on the side of this rock face. And I have no idea what it was, but I do know that the Pomo in this area kept track of the, the calendar by the 13 moon phases. And I suspect that what this set of 13 red lines on the rock face was probably a calendar, an annual way to mark the, the seasons. So these kinds of things, it's just amazing. I mean, there was human bone coming out of gopher back dirt. There, you know, it was, the sites were incredible. There was one site for every 18 acres of land. And some of the sites were 20 to 30 
acres in size. Mm -hmm. So the archaeologists that were working with me at the time, it, it was the highest density of prehistoric sites we had ever seen in our years doing archaeology. Well, you're, what we generally do is we, we walk out towards the marsh, and what, what you've got, basically, we're here at the ranch house right now, to the west of us here, you've got a, a grassland habitat, and then you've got an oak uh, knoll full of oak trees and oak woodland, and the other side of that is the marsh, so you've got several different habitats as we walk directly from the ranch house, and then directly to the north here is Cache Creek, Cache Creek, which drains Clear Lake and goes all the way down to the Yolo Bypass and Sacramento River. So you've got a riparian or a stream bank habitat, so there's a um, there's great different number of habitats you've got here, and every, every habitat has different kinds of plants and animals in it. So. When you walk through Anderson Marsh, and you're thinking about the prehistoric past, uh, the Native American people have lived here. You're actually looking back in time at least 10,000 years. That's 4,000 years older than the Egyptian pyramids. 10,000 years ago, we know there were people living here. It's possible there were people here 20,000 years ago. We just haven't found the evidence yet. But we know they were here 10,000 years ago, and at that time we have an idea of what their culture was like, and their culture changed over the 10,000 years leading up to the arrival of the Europeans. Different types of artifacts, different technologies, population changes, these are all uh, pieces of information that the Anderson Marsh sites contain that will allow us to put together a picture of what life was like over the past 10,000 years.